anyone can do this okay um i've discovered that there are a lot of people who know that they are dealing with some kind of uh, uh, bondage or a spiritual um, a spiritual kind of prison but they're not sure of how to go about about uh, breaking free so this is one of the exercises um that you can do remember and uh, the most important key of um, handling these kinds of issues is remembering how uh, how the bondages come to uh, come to be in the first place you will realize that most of them do not happen um, face to face unless uh, um, for people who have gotten themselves into very um, uh, very uh, interesting situations like my uh, my uh, hypnosis the other time that was one incident in which a person took um, advantage of my actual presence to cast um, to cast some kind of uh, what you call spells or witchcraft basically witchcraft is um, the negative application of demonic power negative and demonic so um, most of the time you'll find yourself in bondage not because um, you went physically before um, a witch doctor or somebody came to see you and spoke um, words or did something to you physically or they had something uh, physically that they used against you sometimes they just do it uh, spiritually or uh, i would say by uh, their imagination to put you in bondage and the key to always remember when um when dealing with uh, basically in any kind of situation is that um the sword cuts both ways it's a double-edged sword a double-edged sword is that um, is a, it's a, it's the kind of swords that are used in um, in warfare. Uh, if if you've watched the ancient epics um, where uh, sword was the uh, the main weaponry that was being used, or if you've watched um, some of these uh, Eastern especially, um, and the old the older European wars before the invention of the gun. So the sword that they were using was something that was um, it was long. Then it was um, it was uh, long and like this. Then sharpened both sides, so you could swing it this way and swing it this way. So that's what a double-edged sword means. That what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Whatever can be used um, against you, um, you can stand um, on the same basis and use it and um, use it against those um, who um, use it against you. The word. Uh, remember when Christ was speaking and he said that these words are spirit and um, you'll find in scripture and also in a lot of the old uh, scripts that there's no difference between the word and the sword. The word, um, case in point, look at the, um, the writings of the early Babylonian and um, the early Babylonian and Sumerian writings. You will see that um, the letters and the numbers are actually um, the pictures of the sword, their representation of the sword in various positions to refer to uh, acts or sayings that uh, they were using in their language. So that is how powerful uh, the word is. And remember that uh, the sword and the word are one and the same thing. Our society is so depraved um, to the extent that there's a lot of um, witchcraft that is going on. And most people who are practicing um, witchcraft practices are um, our relatives, our um, neighbors, our workmates, but they're doing it um, secretly. Uh, we're in the age that the Bible spoke about when um, it's written that in those in the last days there will be people who will deny uh, the, they will deny divinity, but uh, secretly have some kind of um, a power that they will deny no i don't have this i can't do this this is not true this is not scientific this is not um historical um basically our uh, our society is based um on deception or uh, what is called delusion and the delusion is uh, uh based on uh, intentional denial and uh, misrepresentation of truth so um when you notice that you're dealing with a bondage, 
and you will feel it physically first of all through draining of your energy you will feel it to the dreams that you're having for example um, you start praying that um, you're in a, in a house or in a premise or back in your school or um, uh, in a very de uh, depleted uh, house or you're locked in somewhere or you can even dream that you're in prison or you're trying to run and you can't leave these are all signs of bondage and most of the time it's your spirit being aware trying to leave um, the bondage and um, being restrained by a power and it happens by um, imagination so um, it's true when they say that uh, dreams are actually um, something that is all um, in your mind and it's also not true because your mind is actually a world uh, that is a spiritual world so when somebody tells you something is in your mind it's uh, they're referring to actually your spiritual world so um i'll do an exercise today uh, using your mind okay using your mind after um after remembering uh, the kind of uh, situation that you've seen uh, yourself in because some sometimes our angels um, or our guardian angels reveal the kind of uh, places that you're in sometimes our dreams uh, okay let me not get into dreams but um, once you've realized that you are in your uh, in a bondage identify the bondage first which is very important so that you can have specific prayers and prayers are more effective when um, they're targeted for example in my case after um, after the hypnotic session i realized that i was in a bondage um, I'm assuming that uh, the man must have had some time with me um, for him to be able to do whatever he uh, do to make it to pass, whether it was by casting of, um, of a spell or of words or whatever he did. So uh, what I did, I, by my, my imagination, I pictured myself uh, back um, in, that, uh, in that area or in that place where it happened. So in my mind, I imagine that I was in that place and um, I imagine that uh, the power of God and also this is very important when you are dealing with anything just remember that um, God cannot be uh, withheld from accessing any place remember everything everything came from God remember he says that uh, where can we hide it's Paul who said this where can I think it was Paul where can we hide in the presence from the presence of God he asks or maybe it was Christ. Is it darkness? Darkness cannot um, hide us from the presence of God. Even in hell, you cannot hide from the presence of God. So bearing this in mind, remember that there is no um, unclean place where you cannot summon the, um, the power of God in its fullness. And in fact, it could be even more, um, more powerfully demonstrated in, um, in the darkest um, of the times. I've seen greater miracles when... Um, I was in the uh, deepest of bondages, the darkest hour. That's when uh, the most um, the most awesome or the most powerful events that ever happened to my life happened uh, during uh, my times of bondage and serious bondage. So uh, for for me, when I was thinking of the hypnosis in my imagination, I went back to the same place and imagined that. Um, the presence of God was with me. I imagined the presence of God um, covering me inside and out and dissipating every form of bondage that was holding on to me. And this is a principle that um, you can apply anywhere. In your house, for example. Right now, we could do this. Let's um, imagine this, that... Um, the presence of God or the power of God. Presence and power are the same thing. Um, the power of God is basically his character. Love, peace, joy, goodness, godliness, holiness, justice, compassion, uh, kindness. And these are very powerful. Um, they're very powerful cherubim. So when you're talking about um, the power of God, you're referring to uh, you're referring to powers that are beyond um, some of the greatest powers that are upon the earth, beyond the kings and the rulers of the earth. So imagine that um, in that place, whether it's um, 
it's a house that you've seen yourself in in a dream whether it's um, a school that you keep repeating that you're in it or whether you're seeing yourself in a coffin whether you're seeing yourself um, in a depleted house that you don't know or you keep seeing yourself in a village or in a city that you um, you left years ago and it is not um, a good experience imagine this imagine that the presence of God and you and uh, this can also help uh, because um, it's a um, it's something that psychologists usually um, apply when they're doing shadow work because sometimes some of the traumatic experiences that people go through result to a splitting of the soul, an actual splitting. And sometimes um, some of these bondages are um, achieved by creating a traumatic experiences, uh, by creating traumatic experiences in which the soul, uh, a part of the soul separates itself. And hypnosis has been proven to be one of the ways uh, through which um, the soul can separate. So um, I assumed that during the process, there's a part of my soul that remained in that place. And this happens also in other bondages, that um, a traumatic experience, which is why you will dream of very scary um, events in your dream. Um, the demonic um, or the powers, the rulers of darkness are trying to recreate um, a situation where your soul uh, will split so um, take that part of you that you saw in your dream because uh, many times our dreams are actually parts of our soul which we have left behind especially if you're dreaming about um, a school that you were in some time ago or um, a house that you lived with you lived in very many years ago or as a child um, or any place that you are in a very long time ago it means that you may have left a portion of your soul uh, because either of trauma or just um, a bondage that um, was uh, was cast in that place. So um, treat that um, that part of yourself that is kept in bondage as um, as a part of you or as a uh, as a spirit that needs to be rescued and rejoined back to the rest of your spirit. So imagine you're back in that place. Imagine you're seeing, um, you're seeing that spirit that is bound in that place that you keep seeing. Actually, what you're seeing in your spirit is the experiences of, um, of this, uh, this soul that has been separated uh, from you. But because it's still part of you, you're still experiencing it. And many times, the bondage is usually attached um, to the separated part of your spirit because it's usually weakened by the fact that it is a split part of your soul. It doesn't have the full um, extent of the powers that are available to you. So it's easy to be kept in bondage than um, you as a whole person. So in that place, let the power of God dissipate, cover the entire atmosphere, the entire realm that formed part of that dream. Let it be joined to the power of God and let the power of God begin to crush it. Let the power of God seep into every area of that visual. Go in. The power of God is like an X-ray, um, X-ray particles. Nothing can stop them. No metal, no wall, no person can stop them. Let it dissipate into everything. And now let the power of God now take over. Make everything disappear that is the darkness that is holding you in that place. Just like the snap of a finger. Then every darkness dissipates. And also aim at that split soul of yours that is back there. Liberate it from any uh, spiritual attachment or demonic attachment that uh, may be holding on to it. And baptize it, cleanse it thoroughly with the power of God. And seep through that um, that uh, piece of your split um, soul. And let it be joined back to you. You know when um, 
most ministers who know what they're doing uh, when they're doing uh, deliverance, they don't stop at casting out spirits. They usually uh, go ahead and um, uh, call the uh, the spirit soul. And this is something that one of my former pastors um, told me before I knew anything about um, this, before I started reading psychological um, articles. So when I came to find it in psychology, I realized that it is um, it's important. And when I saw it uh, being uh, referred to by um, a traditional uh, Southern American practitioners, I realized that um, uh, where there's smoke, um, there's fire. So um, if you feel that you need to visit that place again, visit it again, cleanse it with the power of the Almighty. And imagine every bondage and every overarching and imposing power that is in that place dissipates and becomes nothing, becomes a nothingness, gets replaced by the freeing power of God. And, uh, and one thing about the power of God is that it's freedom. The power of God and freedom are one thing. And the opposite is true for the powers of darkness, that once the powers of darkness come upon you, the effect is bondage. Pro you will feel actually pressed down. So whenever um, you feel pressed down, uh, realize um, it could be bondage that is trying to impose uh, itself upon you and by your imagination use the power of God uh, to dissipate it 